In The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Steve Carell's character seems to have a clearly defined problem, but is that really what the problem is? Like, the, the audience goes in with one vision of what his problem is, but is that really his real problem in the end? Well, uh, I mean, he. Uh, a lot of times you have an external problem and kind of an internal arc as well, and those two things are intertwined, and so they both kind of get resolved in the end. So for me, his external problem is that he's a 40-year-old virgin, and these people at work know about it now and are focused on it and he's terrified and self-conscious and feels overwhelmed and over, in over his head and um, and nothing goes right as he's trying to deal with, now I have this woman I'm dating and these people, he's they're trying to get me you know, having sex with and so forth. And so I do think the external problem for the whole movie is, is he gonna be, be able to resolve his virginity and do it in a way that he's happy with, which probably means this woman he's in a relationship with is gonna know and it's gonna be okay and they're gonna finally have sex and it's all gonna be fine. So that's the external problem. So I don't think it really changes uh, in terms of that being the problem that we spend the whole movie waiting to see resolved. Internally, he's got his own arc about his own um, self-image and his own idea of who he is and his own you know, willingness to grow and change as an adult man which is intertwined with that. And so he's got all the action figures in their boxes and he doesn't drive, he rides a bicycle. And, you know, there's all these things that are kind of like childlike about him as well. And, um, and so you kind of see at a certain point that he has to internally change in some way in order to have the external thing work out. So the way he, he gets internally, he gets pressured to change in the big blow up scene with her, which is really about his secret that he hasn't told her, but they're selling all of his stuff and he's freaking out about it, right? Because she wants him to sell on eBay all of his toys so he can like open his own store and like be a grown up kind of, and he, and he's not ready to do that. So on some level, he's not ready to be a grown up. So there's that internal arc, but the external problem is losing his virginity successfully and being able to be with her. Okay, so it seems like that's very clear to the audience, the internal and external conflict. With Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, do you feel that the internal and external are clear or there's just more of an external and there wasn't so much of an internal with Leo's character if he is the main, let's say, well, I realize there's three protagonists. But. I mean, I think there's, I think there are external and internal arcs for, we'll just talk about Leo's character. Um, it's just that he's not actively pursuing a resolution in a way that's really super stressful the way it is in The 40-Year-Old Virgin and it, and it plays out in a slower paced way. But basically I would say his external problem is his acting career seems to be waning and he doesn't know what to do and he feels like he has no way to fix it. Then there's like this one lengthy sequence in the middle where he's acting on this TV show and he gets inspired to do a good job that day and he does after some conflict along the way. And then in the end, what happens with the whole Manson stuff, he has another opportunity to do something that in the end feels like it kind of in a weird way works out and helps him meet the next door neighbors and get an entree into the new Hollywood world that Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski represent that he was felt shut out of before. So you do see a resolution to that problem in a way. And you also have, there's a sequence where time has passed where he's like gone to Italy and stuff, right? And so there's some sense that maybe he's resolving that too by going and doing those, I guess, spaghetti westerns and stuff. So, um, but the the internal arc is, I think, is more faint. But it's basically, I think, it's just kind of like he feels kind of like sorry for himself, and he has to just kind of like buck up and you know be about the work instead of his own you know career prospects. Um, and for Brad Pitt, I think there's less there's less going on. I mean, he's not really he not only is he not pursuing a resolution, we don't necessarily feel like oh his stuntman career is falling apart and it matters. It's just kind of like, okay, he's, he's, now at a certain point, he's not gonna be on the payroll anymore with Leo and it's like, oh, that's sad, but that doesn't kind of happen until right near the end. So I think there's, it's more a sense of, he, like you said, he's kind of happy living his life, it seems like, even though he doesn't have a lot. Um, so unlike Leo, he's not even bothered by his problems. So why would the audience? We're not really bothered. We're just kind of like enjoying watching the guy and, I think there's some great scenes, like the one where he goes to Spawn Ranch, I think is a really compelling sequence. 
Um, but there's not that sort of overall problem that we're really urgently addressing and he's actively kind of uh, chasing throughout the movie. But maybe is that that character's problem, the fact that, um, sorry, Cliff Booth's problem, is that he is too content with this like mediocrity and being in this trailer and he's got this adorable dog and they're kind of like, you know, he's eating with these TV dinners or whatever, his macaroni and cheese, and it's almost like he's not okay it's because he's not shaken up by that? Like how the, he, he's too complacent? I don't think we see him as too complacent. I think we just see him as a guy that's kind of fine with his life. Um, and I don't think we're saying, oh, you need to fix your life. You need to change and find some new path toward being a stuntman or whatever, nor do I think he really finds one in the end. I mean, he also has this climactic sequence on that fateful day in August. Um, and maybe his life will be somewhat different after that. I can't remember if there's a sense that he's going to keep working for Leo after all. Or, um, but I don't think there. I don't think there's really a sense of a problem. It's like he tries to get hired on that one job, and they're not going to hire him. And then we have the flashback to when he made those people mad, which is why they don't want him to work. But. It's a very light problem. It's the kind of problem you would normally see in the first few pages of a script, which is, oh, he's a stuntman, but he's not really working as a stuntman. And he wishes he was. And then usually there'd be some big catalyst of, oh, this big thing happens, and now he's going to spend the rest of the movie trying to solve this big thing. We don't really have that big thing until the very end he has a big thing. But he solved that so kind of easily that I don't think there's a ton of tension and concern about it because he's clearly just Mr. Super Badass. So, you know, it's it's fun to watch in a way it's certainly riveting but it's not a character who's like growing and changing and solving some inner or outer problem in his life i didn't think whereas with the 40 year old version steve carell there is this arc that yeah he's solving a very important problem that's plaguing his life at the end of that movie he's completely changed at the end he's a grown-up now 